Hey guys, uh, in this episode I have for you not one but two very special Australian muscle cars from the 1980s. This is a pair of 1982 SS model Holden Commodores. Uh, Holden of course being the Aussie branch of General Motors. But these two cars weren't actually built in Australia, they were built right here in New Zealand. The two of a special batch of 30 that were produced specifically for production car endurance racing. And of the 30, the two that I'm about to show you are probably the most significant because they are the two General Motors dealer team cars, or basically the two, the two factory cars. Uh, the one right behind me here was driven by nine times Bathurst winner and Australian Holden racing legend Peter Brock. And the other car was driven by two-time Can-Am champion and, to date, New Zealand's only Formula One world champion, Denny Holm. Uh, anyway, I'll show you around these things. They're a pretty cool couple of cars. Okay, so for those of you not hailing from Australia or New Zealand, this right here is a first-generation Holden Commodore. Uh, these cars came equipped with either a four-cylinder, six-cylinder or 308 cubic inch Holden V8. So before I provide the background info on these particular cars, back in the 1960s, a 500-mile endurance race was created, uh, contested at the Pukekohe Racing Circuit, and it was called the Benson & Hedges 500. Benson & Hedges, you see right there, sponsored the race. Uh, only New Zealand assembled cars were eligible to compete, and they had to be completely bog standard. You couldn't modify them at all. Uh, the race continued right throughout the 70s and into 1980, but in 1981 it became a three-race endurance series uh, with rounds held at Pukekohe, Bay Park and Manfield. Now in 1981, the most potent Holden Commodore that you could buy that was New Zealand assembled was the SLE, which was basically a luxury barge. It had the 308 cubic inch Holden V8, which was a good thing, but it had an automatic transmission, it had little 14 inch steel wheels, and it had a 63 litre fuel tank. However, Holden's main rival, Ford, their contender was equally unimpressive. It was the Fairmont Gear. It had a 302 cubic inch V8 and an automatic transmission. At the end of the 1981 B&H Championship though, it was Ford who came out on top. Gary Sprague and Leo Leonard shared a Fairmont Gear and won the championship. Now in Melbourne, Australia, Peter Brock's Holden Special Vehicles Company was producing really potent Holden Commodores. Uh, they were street cars, but they were created with the purpose of homologating parts for racing. And one of those cars would have been perfect for the B&H series. It would have cleaned up. But, of course, it was built in Australia and not New Zealand, so it didn't comply. However, the B&H series regulations said that a New Zealand manufacturer could produce 25 versions, basically a homologation special, of an existing production vehicle. And that is where these cars right here came in. Now at the time, a guy called Robin Curtis was the GMNZ press officer. And Robin also oversaw the GM dealer team competition program, which comprised Vauxhall Chevettes in rallying. But as that program was coming to an end, Robin suggested moving focus away from the Chevette and onto the Commodore and building a special homologation batch specifically to go and win the B&H Endurance Series. And that's essentially how these cars came to be. So as soon as Robin got approval to build these cars, he immediately contacted Peter Brock, and Brock was totally involved in their design and development right the way through to ensure that they would become winning race cars. Uh, Brock's Holden Special Vehicles built all the engines in Melbourne and shipped them to New Zealand where they were fitted to all 30 cars. Uh, Holden Special Vehicles also supplied the deeper front chin spoiler and the three-piece wraparound Group C style rear spoiler. The cars were fitted with Bilstein shocks and lower, stiffer springs, and they sat about an inch 
closer to the ground than a standard Commodore and they were also fitted with beefier uh, sway bars. They had 15 inch Simmons wheels, These, this car here has actually got 16 inch Simmons wheels but they're a very very similar pattern to that but uh, yeah you can see overall it makes for quite a tough looking package. So this right here is the heart of the beast, a uh, lovely 308 cubic inch Holden V8. Uh, these were essentially a fairly stock motor. They were all built, as mentioned earlier, by Brock's Holden Special Vehicles in Australia and all shipped back to New Zealand where they were fitted to these cars on uh, all, all 30 cars on uh, on the Trentham assembly line. So basically 9.4 to 1 standard compression, standard pistons, but they had a lightened flywheel, uh, bigger valves and also some porting work done. So they produced about 250 horsepower basically as they rolled off the assembly line, which was, which was pretty healthy. Uh, in racing form a lot of the teams did little tweaks and bits and pieces as they could without actually breaking the regulations if they could get away with it and uh, there was talk that some were getting up to sort of closer to 300 horsepower in racing trim. Um, special headers were also fitted, a twin exhaust system and the motor was backed by a four speed M21 transmission so that was a big deal in itself because obviously the SLEs that contested the 1981 series were mired with the horrible automatic so yeah just a just a really great racing package that it was now if i can get under here you'll see that is a very big 90 litre fuel tank so these cars again they had to run the stock standard fuel tank as it rolled off the assembly line with a standard Holden Commodore in 1982 had a 63 litre fuel tank, these had a 90 litre fuel tank. And so obviously they could go much further in between pit stops. And that was a good thing. So these cars were designed to go racing and that's exactly what they did. Of the 30 that were produced, about 10 or so actually had racing careers. Uh, this car of course was driven by Peter Brock and he shared it with the brilliant single-seater ace, the New Zealand single-seater ace, David Oxton. And from the three rounds that made up, made up the 1982 B&H series, Brock and Oxton won the first two races at Bay Park and Pukekohe, and in the third race they finished second to a similar one of these cars, driven by Neville Crichton and Wayne Wilkinson. And... Uh, won the championship. So this was the championship winning car in the 1982 B&H series. So this is the second of the two GM dealer team Commodore SS's. Both of these cars are owned by my buddy Darren and this is the car as you can see that was driven by Denny Holm and the eccentric New Zealand born Australian racer Captain Peter Jansen. Uh, Darren believes in using the cars as they were intended. So this car actually sees a bit of competition use and as you can see at the moment it's just getting a little bit of work done. If you compare the stripe package on this vehicle you can see that this is the factory stripe package of the red and blue stripes. These were actually all designed by Robin Curtis. This car differs to the Brock Oxton car and that this one has had the blue stripe removed. Okay let me just show you the interior here so all these cars were fitted with a nice little small diameter sports steering wheel and they had this special seat cloth pattern. It was actually similar to the cloth pattern that was fitted to the Peter Brock Group 3 Commodore street cars that were produced in Australia at about the same time uh, but the Brock vehicles had 
a, uh, a red finish, whereas these are a nice sort of a two-tone blue. Uh, it's an amazing car, incredible time warp car. It's uh, really super original. It's done 71 kilometers from new, and it really smells like the 1980s in here, I tell you. Um, just an amazing thing. Now, I love that this car has had the dashboard signed by uh, both David Oxton, you'll see there, and also Peter Brock. It's just a really nice touch. Now, where these cars differed quite massively to their Aussie cousins was that, whereas in Australia, the Commodores raced to a set of regulations called Group C. And Group C allowed a huge number of modifications to be made to the original car. So essentially what you had was a Commodore shell fitted with racing components. And the same was true when Group A was introduced in 1985. But these New Zealand SS Commodores, these were homologated and built as a complete package. So what you see right there has to be raced as is, as it rolled off the assembly line. So it was it was designed and homologated as a total package. And the other area where these cars differ is that even though these aren't officially a Brock Commodore, obviously Peter Brock played a really significant role in their design and development. Now Brock's Holden Special Vehicles in Melbourne produced several variations of Brock Commodores and these these are special cars that were that were designed and developed at that facility um, but they they didn't roll down a General Motors assembly line as a Brock Commodore these ones here did these are the only Brock connected Commodore to have ever been built on a General Motors assembly line and in fact Peter's young brother Phil actually came to New Zealand and spent a week here overseeing the assembly of these cars as they went down the production line. I love that Darren has sticked up both cars correctly to their 1982 B&H racing series liveries. A lot of people wouldn't understand why you would do this to such a rare car, but in fact I just think they look fantastic. Uh, this is correct to how they raced in 1982. Of course, being standard production cars, once they're relatively short racing careers ended, uh, all the racing stickers were removed and they were on sold to unsuspecting buyers who had no idea when they were dropping the kids off at school that they were sitting in the same seat as Denny Holm or Peter Brock. How cool is that? Big grunters, the ANZ touring cars. Gary, Gary Sprague. Sprague out in the lead. And Robbie Frenisovich has crossed the white line there, so he may be penalised for that. You're not allowed to do that. And Gary Sprague in the lead from Wilkinson. Oh, Trevor McLean in third place, hopping yes. in there quickly. And Franzovich has said he may get penalised for the, uh, crossing that white line. So if Robbie comes through and wins this race, he might find that he's got a penalty of a minute on him because it's uh, a no-no in motor racing to cross the white line off the start. Gary Sprague, a brilliant start, driving very hard. He's got his car set up well, and it's bobbling around all over the circuit. He's uh, braking well, it's pointing in well. He's obviously got his tyre pressures right, and his tyres right. Franzovich moving up through the field with Midgley right behind him. And break and the grunt is getting him out of the corners so fast. Tom Walkershaw very aggressive taking different lines he's not going to sit back and wait to get through in the first few laps he's going to be aggressive. So there we have it guys, I've been battling the weather all day, 
but we got there in the end. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a thing or two about these about these really special cars. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to click like, and uh, while you're at it, hit the subscribe button. What do you got to lose? Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching.